Napakainam na tayo ay nasa presensya ng Panginoon at sa presensya niya, marami tayong pagpapalang makakamit. Isa doon, lalong-lalo nating nadadama kung ano ang alam ng Diyos tungkol sa atin. At mahalaga yon dahil naitutuwid niya tayo at natutulungan sa ating mga pangangailangan. Ang pag-aaral natin ngayon, pinamagatan natin, God knows who does o kung sino ang gumagawa ng mga pinagagagawa sa buhay. Salamat do Diyos dahil kayo po ay all-knowing. Wala kaming maililihim sa inyo at mabuti rin para sa amin yan dahil naitutuwid nyo kami, naitatama at natutulungan. Sa sandaling ito, Panginoon, turuan nyo po kami na lalo na na magpasakop sa inyong espiritu, sa inyong katotohanang nagpapalaya. Enable us to see you face to face, to hear your voice, to learn from you. We ask you, Father, to speak in simple terms and we pray for wisdom that we may apply these lessons in our daily lives. Kayo ang maging tagapangaral, wala kami ibang gustong dinggin. Gamitin niyo po ang inyong lingkod na daluyan ng iyong mga salita at katuroan, ngunit kayo lang ang nais namin maging guro. Lord, teach us, lead us. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God knows who does. Well, si Judas ay isang tagasunod ni Jesus. At napaglaroan ng mga Pilipino yung salitang Judas, at ipinapalit ko minsan sa English na who does o sino ang gumagawa. Kaya may mga jeepney ko minsan, makababasa mo sa sticker, God knows who does not pay. At ang spelling ng Judas ay H-U-D-A-S. Well, Judas was a disciple. We have no record of how he was recruited. But what we know is that he betrayed Jesus, aside from the other things. Meron pong isang uh, eksena sa ministry ng Panginoon kung saan siya ay inalayan, binuhusan ng napakamahal na pabango ng isang babaeng uh, nagmamalasakit sa kanya, isang babaeng uh, nagsisisi sa kanya mga kasalanan, at ito'y minasama ni Judas. Expensive perfume was poured on Jesus, a fragrant and pleasing offering, but Judas was not happy with it. John 12:4. To six. A disciple named Judas Iscariot was there. He was the one who was going to betray Jesus, and he asked, Why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor? Jesus did not really care about the poor. He asked this because he care, carried the money bag, and sometimes he would steal from it. So ang treasurer ng mga disciples, si Judas, sa dinami-rami ng mga disciples, siya pa yung naging treasurer at uh, binatikos niya yung pagbubukas at pagbubuhos ng mahal na pabango para kay Jesus. Sabi niya, eh kung ibinenta sana natin yan na kumita tayo at napagbentahan natin yan, 300 silver coins at ibigay natin sa mahihirap. Yung pala ang talagang gusto lang niya, mas dumami yung laman nung hinahawakan niya na kaban para mas marami siyang makupit-kupit. Now, 300 silver coins Sabi niya, mahalagang pera yon dapat ibinenta na lang sa kapakanan ng mahihirap. But, ironically, he was going to sell Jesus for 10% of that. Only 10%. Kasi for 30 pieces of silver, pinagkanulo niya ang Panginoon. Yung 300 silver, pinaghihinayangan niya. Yung pala, 30 lang niya, ibebenta ang Panginoon. And it was very prophetic because indeed, yung pinagbentahan, niya sa Panginoon ay nauwi sa pagbili ng isang lupang naging libingan ng mga foreigners. Na hanggang ngayon, pag nagpunta kayo sa Jerusalem, yung valley na yon walang tao, walang tumitira, kasi libingan pa rin tulad nung pinagdalhan ng mga priests sa perang isinosoli niya sana nung nagsisi siya sa kanya kasalanan, pero hindi tinanggap ng mga pare dahil dirty money daw yun, ibinili na lang nila ng isang lote for charitable internment ng mga foreigners na namamatay sa Israel. But, that's already going far. So, pinaghihinayangan niya yung pera, yung pala, para marami siyang makupit. Now, we see that Jesus betrays small time at the beginning. Pakupit-kupit, barya-barya. He betrays his position as treasurer. Treasurer ka, ingat yaman. Pagkatapos, ikaw itong magnanakaw. He betrays his master and his teammates. Ang Panginoon at yung mga ibang disciples sa kasama niyang nagsisikap, nagsasakripisyo, sinira niya yung tiwala. 
he betrays the public or their public, the people that they serve because they could serve more if this money is not stolen. Therefore, he betrays the mission of Jesus. He betrays small time. Luke 22, 3 to 6. Then Satan entered the heart of Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve apostles. Judas went to talk with the chief priests and the officers of the temple police about how he could help them arrest Jesus. They were very pleased and offered to pay Judas some money. He agreed and started looking for a good chance to betray Jesus when the crowds were not around. Now, let's pay more attention to the detail of the story. Dahil sa mga maliliit na pangungupit at mga maliliit na kasalanan nitong si Judas, inaccommodate niya si Satanas, lumaki ng lumaki ang kontrol sa kanya hanggang biglang pumasok na sa puso niya at siya na ngayon ang nasusunod doon. Then, nagpunta siya sa mga kalaban ng Panginoon, sa mga religious leaders, at siya mismo ang nagalok kung paano niya maipagkakanulo ang Panginoon. Remember that before even he was offered money, he was the first one to initiate contact and to go to these religious leaders. And only after he had presented himself, the religious leaders gave him more reasons to betray Jesus and offered the money. So his original motivation is unexplained. Definitely, nadagdag lang yung money angle. The money angle came later after he approached the religious leaders. Judas could have other reasons for wanting to betray Jesus aside from the money. Could it be professional jealousy? He was not in the inner circle. There was an inner circle of three within the twelve. Could it be disappointment that Jesus did not seem interested in political leadership? Kasi mayroong mga tao talaga gusto nilang paghaluin niyang religious and political leadership. In fact, many people in Israel expected the Messiah, the Savior, to lead as a political king. Ang expectation ng Israel sa darating na matagapagligtas, na Mesiyas, ay magiging tunay at literal at political na hari. At sa panahon na sila ay uh, sinasakop ng ibang bayan, tulad ng panahon ni Jesus na sila ay sinakop ng Roma, that this political king would lead a rebellion, a revolution, that would set them free from Rome. That was their expectation. And that was the expectation of many about Jesus. Some scholars suspect that it was the reason why Judas Iscariot joined the movement. He thought it was going to have a political flavor. John 6.15, Jesus realized that they would try to force him to be their king. So he went up on a mountain where he could be alone. Ang Panginoon mismo ay naramdaman niya na ang mga tao gusto siyang puwersahin at i-declare siyang king of Israel. And in fact, he was killed by the Romans because that was the crime that he was accused of, being king of Israel. Kaya doon sa krus na pinagpakuan sa kanya, sa ibabo ng kanyang ulo, nakapako yung karatula, king of the Jews. Kasi kung ano yung krimen na pinatawan ng parusang kamatayan sa krus, yun ang naka-announce doon sa krus, nakapako sa karatula. It was a crime because there was another king. The Herodian families were appointed by Rome to be kings over Israel. So de to declare somebody else as king is to go against the power of Rome. And it was, at least politically and legally, the crime for which Jesus died, being called the king of the Jews. Acts 1.6, While the apostles were still with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, are you now going to give Israel its own king again? So even the apostles thought that Jesus was going to be a political king. That's why they were not ready to see Jesus get tried, crucified, and then died. Ang akala nila magsisimula ng isang bagong political family that will rule over Israel coming from the roots of King David. So was Judas a zealot? Isang revolusyonaryo na nabigo, kaya nagtaksil sa Panginoon? Was he a disappointed follower, a materialistic man driven by love for money? We are not sure which one really motivated him. But because he already opened his heart for some degree of satanic control, then he opened his heart for more and more control coming from Satan. Then, directed by Satan, Jesus betrays, I mean, Judas betrays Jesus more. 
Big time. Nagsimula yung betrayal niya, maliit. Pero dahil itinuloy-tuloy niya, hindi niya pinigil, lumaki. Judas now would betray Jesus by approaching his enemies. Now this was beyond kupit-kupit or stealing small change. Satan entered his heart. What was the entry point? What was the foothold? Small-time betrayals. This is the trouble with petty crimes. They open the door for more. Mahirap yung may konting mga kasalanang iniingatan at patuloy na hindi itinutuwid kasi nagiging pasukan ito ng mas maraming influensya mula kay Satanas. Kaya ang payo ng Ephesians 4.27, Do not give the devil a foothold. Huwag bibigyan ng pagkakataon si Satanas kahit kapraso. Dahil siya mapagsamantala, pag nadaya ka niya sa konti, mamaya dadayain ka niya sa malaki. Pag nakalusot siya sa konti at inulit-ulit mo, mamaya sanay ka na gusto mo, mas malaki. Palaki ng palaki. Maliit ang simula ng maraming mga pagkakadapa. Katulad ni Cain, nagsisimula sa inis niya, sa galit niya, pero sabi sa kanya ng Diyos sa Genesis 4.7, If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Nagagalit siya dahil hindi naging katanggap-tanggap ang kanyang offering sa Diyos. Nag-iisip na siya ng masama laban sa kanyang kapatid. At nung lumaon nga, pinatay niya. Pero sabi sa kanya ng Diyos, kung tama ba ginagawa mo, sa palagay mo hindi ka magiging katanggap-tanggap. Siyempre, tatanggapin ka. Pero pag mali ang ginagawa mo, yung kasalanan para isang tigre na naghihintay sa labas ng iyong pinto, crouching, nakapwesto, nakayuko, nahandang tumalon, lumundag at sumalakay sa iyo pag nagbukas ka na ng pinto. At siya na ngayon ang mananaig at kawawa ka na. Sabi niya, yung kasalanan, pag hindi mo tinigilan, pag patuloy kang gumagawa ng mali, pag hindi ka gumawa ng tama, nakaabang sa iyo ang kasalanan parang isang tigre like a crouching tiger waiting to devour you doing right drives sin away kaya sabi ng Panginoon pag ginawa mo tama magiging katanggap-tanggap ka mga kapatid kung tayo po dumadaan sa mga kumisan mga pagsubok temptation just do right Automatically, when you do right, you leave no space for what is wrong. And sabi ng Bible, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And what is the best resistance, aside from saying, get away from me, Satan, what is the best resistance but doing the right thing? Choice natin yan. Pag patuloy mong ginawa yung mali, lalaki ang hold sa'yo. Mamaya, wala ka ng control. John 13:27. Right then, Satan took control of Judas. Jesus said, Judas, go quickly and do what you have to do. Isa ito sa mga pinakamahihiwagang pangyayari sa buhay ng isang tao, yung nangyari kay Judas. Hindi na matatapos ang dalawang libong taon na ng debate kung may kasalanan ba siya o wala, siya ba ang dapat sisihin o hindi. But what we know is, having been welcomed in small ways, now Satan true to his nature of deception, would take advantage. He would now take control of Judas. Dati na i-influence lang niya, ngayon pinasok na niya at pinoses. Kaya pinag-iingatan yung maliliit. Parang yung mga may kumakatok sa iyo mong bahay, binuksan mo lang ng maliit yung pinto, pinapasok mo ng konti, mamaya magnanakaw na pala, itinali ka na, gumawa na ng mga masama, dahil nagbukas ka ng maliit. Siyempre ang simula, maliit. Mga bisyo, maliit lang ang simula niyan. Hanggang mamaya, gumon ka na. Yung mga nagugumon sa mga sugal, sa simula naman yan, pataya-taya lang, pabarya-barya, katuwaan lang. Mamaya, nagkakagalit na silang mag-asawa, nawawala na yung buong kabuhayan nila, itinataya na lahat, pati kaluluwa. Yung drug addiction, sa simula yan, pahitit-hitit, patikim-tikim, mamaya, paturok-turok ng kaunti, mamaya, gumon na, alipin ka na. It all starts small. Yung malaki, hindi dangerous, mga kapatid, kasi alam na alam mo na kasalanan at masama. Yung maliit ang dangerous, kasi yun ang nakakapuwing, yun ang nakakabulag, yun ang nakakadaya. 
na sana ay si Judas to betray Jesus small time. Now, Judas betrays Jesus big time. But remember that Jesus was, uh, Judas was not in complete control of himself. Even Jesus said, do what you have to do. This is a unique case and we will not play judges now. And besides, that's not our story now. But how do we apply this in our lives? Pag mo si Judas, at kung gugunitain natin yung sabi ko ito sa jeepney, God knows who does not pay. No? A play with words. But let's apply it today. God knows who does wrong. God knows who does not stay faithful. Paguhudas din yun. Like Judas, people could betray position. At ito pinag-aaralan natin mga kapatid, hindi na parang history. Sarili na natin ito. Do we do a Judas? Do we betray position? Treasurer ka ba na nandadaya? Executive ka ba na hindi ginagawa ang trabaho? People could betray superior and co-workers by pretending to work and not really work. By earning wages you never deserve, it is doing a Judas. It is a betrayal. You are trusted to be there to work. Yung pala, computer ka ng computer, game ng game, Facebook ng Facebook during office hours. That is stealing. Madaling sabihan si Judas na Judas, ha? Pero ang daming kahudasan ngayon araw-araw na guilty tayo. Kaya natin ito pinag-aaralan, hindi dahil sa kanya, dahil sa atin. Yung kasaysayan niya, ginagawa lang nating liwanag para matapunan din ang liwanag ang mga posibleng mga maliliit na hindi natin nakahalatang paghuhudas natin sa buhay. And that is the purpose of the Word of God. It's like a two-edged sword. It gives comfort and at the same time, it offers surgery kung may mga sakit tayong dapat putulin. Colossians 3.23 Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. So nakabantay ang Panginoon sa lahat ng mga sinusweldo ang manggagawa. Sulit ba ang sweldo? Ngayon, kung you have a high opinion of yourself and you think hindi sulit, kaya ka naglalakwat siya, discuss with your superiors na hindi sulit yon, but don't steal company time and don't deceive them by not working well enough. Substandard work is a form of betrayal. It is also judasic. Malahudas din yan. Kasi inaasahan na maganda ang trabaho mo, hindi maganda. Substandard. Sabi, lahat ng ginagawa ninyo, ituro ninyong ginagawa nyo para sa kalwalhatian ng Diyos. Huwag nyo isipin ginagawa nyo lang para sa tao. Kasi kung iniisip nyo gagawin nyo lang para sa tao, maraming dahilan para kayo tamarin, para hindi nyo galingan ang trabaho nyo. Do it as unto the Lord. Because work is God's gift to men. So do we really work with all our heart? Ephesians 6.5 Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart just as you would obey Christ. Siyempre, wala na naman ngayong modern day ng mga tunay na slaves pero ganun pa rin yun. If you're a wage earner, pinapaupahan mo yung oras mo so inuupahan yun, dapat sulit yung nag-upah. Nagbayad nun. Do we obey our superiors, our employers faithfully? Remember that disobedience, disrespect, and lack of sincerity to superiors is also a form of betrayal. Ephesians 6.5 is clear. It is a command. Earning wages we do not deserve, we do not work for, is a form of betrayal. Ephesians 4.28 He who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work doing something useful with his own hands. So do we work well earning honest income? Sulit ba ang pasweldo ng employer o ang patubo sa'yo ng client? Kung nagtitinda kami, mga bumibili sa'yo, syempre may tubo ka. Sulit ba yun? Do really they, good, do they good, get good service or get products? It is so easy to blame Judas. But what I really challenge everyone, all of us, each one of us, is to see if there's a Judas in each of us. Malapit na naman mag-observe the Holy Week ang bayan. Pero ang pinakamaganda pag-observe niyan, pagsisiyasat sa sarili. People could betray the public, their mission. And more commonly, people could betray wife or husband. 
Proverbs 5.15, you should be faithful to your wife just as you take water from your own well. So, God knows who does not stay faithful to his or to her spouse. It's also a form of Judasic sin, unfaithfulness. Judas Iscariot was unfaithful to Jesus and to his mission, but there are husbands and wives who are not faithful to their partner. Ang dali-daling akusahan si Judas, but marital unfaithfulness is Judasic. As we ponder once again salvation in Christ, the meaning of His death on the cross, eternal life, let us look into ourselves, especially married people. Because when you betray your spouse, you betray your children also. Damay sila dyan. And when you commit adultery with somebody who is married to somebody else, you also betray the spouse of your partner in crime. And their children, if they have children, you betray all the stakeholders. You betray your parents, your parents-in-law, everybody and daming nadadamay when married people commit adultery. So do not be unfaithful to your spouse. Who knows that a lesson on Judas would lead to this? But the important thing is to lift, get out of the particular in the story and go to something more universal in our lives. Malachi 2.16, so guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith. Exodus 20.14, you shall not commit adultery. Isa sa ito sa mga main lessons that we can learn from Judas. His sin was betrayal. But at least Judas can say, well, it was not fully me. Satan took control of me and even the Lord gave his permission for me to do what I have to do. An excuse that married people don't have. You are going to be fully responsible for what you do. People could betray offering and child, parents, and friends. When a friend tells you a secret, when your brother-in-law has trouble with your sister-in-law, do you tell people outside the family about it? That is betrayal. Family secrets must stay within the family unless you have the permission to talk about it. When you give somebody's phone number to another person without the owner's permission, that is betrayal. It's not your number. You are not at liberty to give it. Marami tayong ginagawang mga small crimes, petty crimes. At bakit natin ito binabanggit? Judas started with small crimes. Pakupit-kupit. Ang pinuntahan malaki. Kaya dapat natin unawain, sariwain, at pag-ingatan ng maliliit. Proverbs 11.13, A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. Chismis is judasic. Akalain nyo, marami palang hudas. Pag chismosa ka, pinag-uusapan mo buhay ng may buhay, binibisto mo yung sikreto ng may sikreto, wala kang permiso, that is betrayal too. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. So let's stop blaming Judas and the many Judas is around. Let's only look into ourselves. As we ponder the meanings of the death of Jesus, we should begin to review ourselves again. Judas was not only a man. Judas is also a metaphor, a symbol of what could be true in many people's hearts. When Judas betrayed Jesus big time, at least he was permitted by Jesus himself. He was directed and then controlled by Satan. Then he was remorseful after the act to the point of killing himself. And he even tried to return the dirty money. May mga redeeming qualities si Judas. He did not repent enough, but he was at least remorseful. Are we at least remorseful for our sins? Merong mga husband na labing limang taon na pala niyang dinadaya yung asawang walang kamalay-malay at walang kagilt-gilt. Mabuti pa si Judas na guilty. So let's stop demonizing him and begin to look at ourselves. Not at others, just ourselves. We are at liberty to judge ourselves, not others. So who does a who does? Magandang tanong. 
Kung minsan tayo ay nalulunod, nasasarapan, natatamisan sa maraming turo sa Bible ng mga magagandang pangako, pangako ng pag-ibig ng Diyos, pangako ng pagliligtas, pagpapagaling. Pero dapat din nating tanggapin ang mga mapapakla at mapapait ng mga katuroan ng Biblia kasi madami sa mga gamot talagang mapait. Kaya dapat nating harapin. Let's challenge ourselves. Do I commit little crimes that I do not notice? Papalaki ba ito ng papalaki? Let's be aware of our weakness, our tendency to betray those who trust us. Mga anak na akala ng magulang pumapasok sa school, nasa Boracay pala. At pag nabisto, nangongolekta ng shells for biology. Ubus na ang shells doon, wala na. Let us beware of our landing strips and weak spots. Katulad nun, love for money, pangungupit. Yun ang landing strip ng aeroplano ni Satan. Nakaka-land sa kanya. Weak spot. What is yours? What is mine? We should review that. Ephesians 4.27, remember, do not give the devil a foothold. What sin crouches at your door? Yung mga hindi nagtatapat sa asawa, iintayin nyo pa ba na mabisto kayo? Lahat nabibisto. Walang hindi. Panahon lang. Hindi pwedeng hindi. Sa isang pagpindot mo lang sa phone, napasend sa iba, bisto ka na. At maraming ganyan. Tapos lumiliit yung sobrang papalit, hindi mo na mapigil. Nasend mo na. Mabuti nga. Kasi kung hindi ka pa mabibisto, hindi ka pa rin masusugpo. Mga kapatid, self-correction is a lot nicer than being corrected by circumstance and by the powerful and mighty hand of God. Genesis 4.7, If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Iba-ibang temptation. Iisa lang yan. Galing lang lahat kay Satan. Dapat tanggihan lahat. Do what is right, avoid and stop sinning. It's important therefore to reflect. Magbulay-bulay. Masarap makarinig talaga ng mga matatamis sa salita ng Diyos, pero kahit yung maanghang, mapapakla at mapapait, kailangan din nating balik-balikan paminsan-minsan. And if upon your reflection, realize that there is something wrong, repent. It's the only correct reaction When you realize that you have done wrong, to repent, to say sorry, to return, to pay, to repay, and then to restore yourselves under the power of the Lord. If you were not a candidate for Judasness, help the ones who are. Ang dalangin ko halos wala siguro sa atin na tinatamaan nito. Salamat kung ganon. At kung kayo yun, na hindi naman ako yan, hindi naman ako nagjujudas, salamat, pasalamat kayo sa Diyos. At least this moment you realized that your life has been so blessed. And what do I ask you to do? Pray for those who are. Think of those who face trials every day. Think of those who are made of less material than you were made of. Think of those who are prone to sin, prone to vice, yung mga madaling linglangin, madaling madaya ng emosyon, madaling madaya ng mga kagustuhan at layaw ng katawan, napakadaling sumama sa yaya ni Satanas, pray for them. Do not judge them. Help them. Just help. Because kung hindi tayo yung hudas, may katabi tayong ganon, tingnan yung katabi nyo, panalangin natin hindi siya yun. Diba? Na siya man ay katulad natin na nagsisikap na maging makadiyos. Pero ang pagbabasa ng Biblia, ang fellowship, ang pakikipagnaig sa Diyos, ang pinakamahalag niyan is manalamin para makita ang tunay na kalagayan. Kung ang nakita niyo yung maganda, malinis sa mukha, salamat sa Diyos, may konting dumi, ipagpalinis sa Diyos yan. Pero kung marami, magpasalamat din dahil at least nakita natin muli. Panginoong Diyos, itong istorya na ito ni Judas, napakaraming beses na namin nadinig, binabalik-balikan. Ang ituro mo sa amin ngayon, imbes na usigin siya, imbes na tingnan siya bilang isang karakter na nabuhay mga dalawang limong taon na ang nakalipas, hanapin namin ang bakas ng kanyang pagkatao sa aming sariling puso. 
Hanapin namin kung may mga pandaraya sa aming puso, maliit man o malaki. At sa sandaling ito, mapaalalahanan kami, Panginoon, na dapat isuko agad, pagsisihan, bitawan ko ano man yun. At kung may mga kapatid kami ngayon, Panginoon, na kinausap mo, may inaalaga ang mga kasalanang dapat nang itakwil, na wa, sandaling ito, Panginoon, magkaroon ng isang pasya na matibay, matatag, na ibaguhin ang buhay, talikuran ang mga pandaraya, lalong-lalo sa pamilya, pandaraya sa bayan, kung kami ay mga public officials, at maging matapat kami sa inyo, Panginoon, para ang iyong pagpapala, lalong dumaloy sa aming buhay, at kami naman, daluyan din ang pagpapala tungo sa iba. Magbulay-bulay tayo, mga kapatid, sumandaling mag-isip-isip, madaling maghanap ng ibang huda sa paligid natin, pero ngayon, ang project natin, hanapin yung mga mumunting hudas na yan na pinipilit tumira sa ating puso. Palayasin nyo sa pangalan ng Panginoon, do what is right. Thank you, Lord, para sa mga kapatiran na hindi ito problema, na namumuhay sila ng tama, thank you. At nawapatuloy mo silang bigyan ng kapangyarihan na makilala ang kasalanan at nang hindi huwag papasok sa kanilang buhay. So, balit sa higit na marami at karaniwan sa aming paligid, nadadaya na pagtatagumpayan ng mga tukso, turuan mo kami, Panginoon, na maging malakas ang loob, na kilalanin ang mali, bilang mali, itakwil ito at ituwid ang aming mga pamumuhay. Sa ilang saglit ng pagbubulay-bulay, mga kapatid, hanapan natin ang tinig ng Diyos ng mga personal na application ng lesson sa buhay at kamatayan ni Judas.